morning everybody welcome back to the channel um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been here so I thought it was a good opportunity just to review progress we've managed to start uh, drilling flexi wheat so we get an opportunity to show you that so this is the site where uh, the mustard was growing up to sort of middle of my chest so about four and a half feet uh, the sheep have now finished they've moved next door I'll just cut in some video to show you how high it was sort of two three weeks ago it's plenty tall enough so I'd say it's a good four and a bit feet four foot and this is the sheep have moved next door uh, the mustard here so in both cases this is mustard following winter wheat and uh, the mustard there is probably mid thigh sort of belt type height those are ewes in the field so as you can see uh, the ewes are starting to become visible so they're obviously making some progress I don't know if we can see I'll zoom in next door but they're also ewes clearly visible in that block there so they're about to move see the fences up in the field next door ready for their next move but really pleased with how this is going obviously we've got quite an open autumn this year that's one of the reasons we can move forward in with the flexi wheat drilling so we are at the situation where the sheep have finished grazing the mustard they've left there are places where the mustard is all flat to the ground but as you can see most of it is is like completely defoliated uh, down on the ground standing up it's all quite messy now if this was a situation for a time drill it would simply drag through like this and it would wrap around the tine as if it's wrapping around my boots like this and it makes for a disaster so you have to drill this with uh, a disc drill and this year we are running with a uh, more tandem drill so hopefully I'll get you some footage of the more in action and uh, yeah we cut through the stubbles and we can direct drill straight into this residue now right here we are uh, field slightly further down the valley identical treatment following winter wheat in fact it was a challenging harvest here because it's on the edge of a valley it's close to the buildings it's had livestock in it before i think it's inherently nutrition is is much better it's a nice looking soil really but it's been treated exactly the same the wheat went flat here but we've managed to salvage the situation so we managed to harvest it um, and then it's but it other than that it's had exactly the same treatment we've been through with the more um, and it's a disc drill so here's you can see it's cut a slot here if we dig down a bit there you can see the seed so I'd say that that was a good couple of inches down part of the issue we did have yesterday was that uh, there's another one part of the issue we had yesterday was that the stone on top of the hill was causing the drill to ride out a bit this is only a small field we were just using it for setup we've got a I think it's 15 hectares next door so we will be hitting that today but yes we are uh, we're into the flexi wheat due to the curse of the film producer Henry actually decided to continue drilling with our modified Claydon drill we recently invested in the disc opener modification designed for operation in high trash cover crops as you can see it ran really well and Henry reports it planted the next seven hectares without a blockage the added advantage of being able to use a tine drill after grazing cover crops is the hope that the tine will go some way to reducing the weather risk 
associated with sheep compaction as the action of the tine lifts the compacted surface layer. Now, last year we did a number of videos looking at yield response uh, with different drilling dates and one thing we concluded was that uh, the land needs time to rest after the grazing before you plant the next crop. Now, this and, and part of the reason for that we think is that the sheep do create surface compaction the direct drill is, is planting into that compacted zone so if we can leave it a couple of weeks the, the worms come up grab the residue and sheep poo pull it back down into the field and they um, help alleviate the compaction so that's uh, I can put a link into that video in the description but uh, this year it's really good so far so we're, we're leaving it only a couple of weeks and then we'll go in with the drill however as in with with all winter drilling the concern is the weather after drilling as much as the weather before if you get a really heavy shower straight after it uh, the channel gets retains moisture and the danger is that the seed rots so it's not without its risk uh, but uh, we started the process as as an aside i just wanted to show you this this stretch of hedge here where uh, it is very noticeable uh, how the sheep have tidied the uh, the boundaries the margins of the field and trimmed up the hedges as they've gone along uh, certainly does sheep ownership does reduce your hedge trimming bill that can be no doubt obviously woody plants uh, have far greater root stock go down much deeper if you're a shepherd you will notice that your sheep always graze the hedges before they graze the middle of the field. One commonly shared idea about why sheep do this is that the, the deeper roots of the woody plants means that they can access more micronutrients than the annuals can inside the field and that this is effectively their mineral cabinet for the sheep. So. I'm quite happy to see them nibbling the, the hedgerows. In fact, I find it reassuring. So, uh, but it's nice that it uh, tidies up your margins and uh, reduces your hedge trimming bill. So, another benefit. Unfortunately, closer to home, we've had a big trouble with dogs, dog attacks. I think we've lost, uh, we've lost two. We've got uh, six more that uh, required veterinary attention. And I think with the massive increase in dog ownership during lockdown, this will become an increasing issue for livestock farmers. It was one of the reasons that I stopped sheep ownership of my own, but it's a real concern. And this, this regenerative methodology really does benefit from inclusion of livestock. So um, it's a very sad day when we, we've had to actually pull the sheep out of one block. We just can't stop the dog attacks. Uh, the police have inform, been informed. So uh, it's very sad and uh, I wish the shepherds all the best and that hopefully his season improves. But uh, it's a real challenge living on the urban fringe. So uh, that's our update for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up make any comments you like below and I do my best to answer them all so thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next week goodbye